we're progressing well with this user form task. We've got to a point where we have the user form, we've got some code in the Visual Basic Editor, and those two things are interacting to get data from the user form into the database. And that's how far we got in the last video. We can now put an entry in the first row of the database. And that means we're well on the way to completing this user form task. But clearly, we need to refine the code because we wouldn't want the entry to appear on the first row of the database, we'd actually want the entry to appear on the bottom row of the database. Now, this is very interesting from a coding perspective because we have to create what I would call a dynamic mechanism to identify where the bottom row of the spreadsheet is. Let's get back into the spreadsheet file. This is as far as we've got. We can put an entry in the first row of the database and let's have a look at the Visual Basic Editor. We've got our code here. And this is taking some information from the user form, putting it into the database. So we've got to a point where we've got some code interacting with the user form. So we're making good progress here. And what we're looking at is how to control the row that the data goes into, how to control the row that the data goes into. So you could look at the code now and think, how is that currently being controlled? What in the code controls the row that the data will go into? It's worth, worth thinking about that now. And it is to do with offsets. Remember, offset always controls position. Really powerful Excel VBA commands. And it's going to be the first number um, in the brackets next to the offset command because that that number, the first number, controls the row. The second number controls the column. The first number controls the row. And currently, as we could see, as we can see, we would call these hard-coded values. They are in the code. So every time the code is run, it's going to just appear in the first row of the database. So we clearly need more than that. So this is the challenge for this video. And you might want to pause the video and have a think about how you might do this. How do we create a dynamic mechanism here? So that rather than just going into the first row of the database, it's going to go into wherever the bottom row of the database is. So how might we do that? Well, there's always more than one solution, various ways to do this, but I'm gonna use an approach and combine together a worksheet formula. This is one of my favorite things in VBA programming combine together a worksheet formula with some Visual Basic code to get something really cool done. In this case, we're gonna use a simple worksheet formula to identify how many rows there are in the database, then take the value from that formula, put it into the Visual Basic editor, and that's gonna mean that the code is gonna go into the bottom of the database. Don't worry if you don't understand any of that, it should become clear as we work along. So the first job then is to find a formula that's gonna tell us how big the database is, how many entries are, the database, are in the database. It's also worth mentioning at this point, the structure of the file, the different sheets in the file are helping us to get this job done. We've got three sheets in the file, the data sheet with the data on, a list sheet with the lists on, and in the back end here, an engine. So we've got different sheets with clearly defined roles. Now in the engine, I call it an engine because it's doing lots of things that the user can't see that are important for the spreadsheet to function. A bit like an engine in a car, we can't see it, but it is the mechanism that's keeping the car going forward and also controlling lots of things. So I have a sheet uh, called engine for that purpose. So it's a good place for us to position this formula. The user doesn't necessarily need to, need to see this formula, but it's very important for the code. So to get back to the question, what formula will tell us how many rows, how many rows does the database currently consist of? I can see 250 rows at the moment. So we need a formula to tell us that because it might be 251 or more. What formula will allow us to do that? Well, it's one of my favorite Excel formulae, count A, count A. So count A and then a range is gonna tell us how many cells in that range 
contain data. Now, there's another question here. How big should we make this range? We could just say count a bb. Well, let's go to the data sheet rather. Count a bb on the data sheets. And this is counting all of the entries in column B. I'm going to actually use column E for this, the full name entry. So let's just um, tweak this formula. So this is telling me all of the, this is telling me how many cells in column E on the data sheet contain data. In other words, it's telling us how big the database is. Now this is fine. But there's lots of rows in a spreadsheet. You know, there's a million rows in a spreadsheet. And I'm going to assume that our database is not going to be that big. I'm going to assume we're going to have no more than 10,000 entries in our database. And just so I remember that, I'm going to write a note here to remind me. So why is that important? Well, clearly we could just say, look at the whole column. But if we do that, the formula is going to be looking at every cell in that column, up to a million cells. And it probably wouldn't make a difference in this situation, but if you had a more complicated and sophisticated spreadsheet and you're asking the formula to look at so many cells, eventually that's going to begin to uh, make Excel run slower. It's going to decrease the efficiency of the spreadsheet. So being specific about a range can mean we keep the spreadsheet calculation nice and efficient. In my case, I've assumed 10,000. You may want to assume 100, 1,000 uh, or more. There we go. We've got our count a formula here. So let's just test it. And let's put uh, another value in column E here. And I'd now expect 252. Uh, here we go. This doesn't seem to be working at the moment. Count a data E to E10,000. Okay, I need to put E1 in here. And there we go. Yeah, now the formula is complete. We've got a value of 252 now. Let's do some testing here. Just going to delete this value. And there we go. Now we've got 251. So the formula seems to be uh, working well. I'm going to make a small adjustment here because the formula at the moment is looking at the column header two. Column header is not part of the database. So I'm just going to say count a the reference minus one and that gives us 250, which is the actual number of entries in the database. So we've got our count a formula working. It's telling us the size of the database. So now we need to go into the Visual Basic Editor, reference that formula, and that will allow us to create this dynamic mechanism. So Visual Basic Editor, Alt F11. And you can see highlighted, this is what we're interested in because this is controlling the row position. Offset one, one is going to offset one row down, one column across, remember? So we're interested in this value here, which is controlling the row position. So one approach would be to directly reference uh, the formula that we just created. It's on the engine sheet and it's in cell B3. There we go. <clears throat> okay, yeah, this is one approach for us. So we've just, um, just need a little more code here. There we go. So we've directly referenced uh, cell B3 on the engine sheet. Just remind ourselves that. So let's see what, what happens now. Let's just try running this code back to the spreadsheet, uh, user form, and I'm just gonna put some information in here. And then let's uh, run this code. So we can see in the first row, we've got my surname and my full name, but not, not my first name. So let's go down to the bottom. We can see my first name has actually overwritten the entry, the last entry in the database. So what happened there? Well, because I changed this line of code, tweaked this line of code, only the first name, you can see this line of code relates to the first name. That means that the first name went 250 rows down. 
The other details are still hard coded. So this, this, this appears, appears to work and we can see what happened there. Uh, the first name went to the bottom of the database and the other details remain in the first line. That's because I've changed this value here. Use the, use the worksheet reference there. So this is the effect that we're looking for. And I could just copy paste this line of code, the worksheet reference, copy paste that into the other places, um, into the offset command in the other places. That would work well. But I want to do something a bit more neat and tidy than that. I mean, this is quite a long piece of code. Could we make it more compact and kind of easier to manage? I think that's a good idea. We can do that using a variable. I'm just going to clean out some bits and pieces here. Using a variable. Remember, a variable is just a way to store a piece of information that's useful to us in coding. I'm going to call it target row. That seems to make sense because we're trying to target a row in the database. I'm going to use an integer variable. If you have a big database over 32,000 rows, you might want to use a long variable. That's going to allow you to use those bigger values. So um, this variable, we can use it to store the value in the worksheet that the count a formula is returning. This 250 value, we can assign it to a variable. Then we only need to reference the variable in the code. That's going to be more neat and tidy and easier for us to do. So let's assign the value in the first row. I'm going to just turn down the volume a little bit on my system. And then I'm going to use this line of code here that we know seems to work because we just did a little test. And now the value, the size of the database, that value is being assigned to target row. Let's just step through the code. I'm going to put a stop in the code here, left, uh, left click in the margin. Let's just run the code and see what happens now. Okay, so I'm in the code. The code has stopped halfway through the routine. If I just hover over target row, we can see target row equals 250. So that value from the formula has been assigned to the variable. We can now use the variable to do something useful, specifically to control position. Just going to stop the routine there. If you hit the F7 button, by the way, we're now looking at the object, the user form. If you hit the F7 button on a PC, that's going to allow you to see the code very quickly. So this target row variable, let's use it to control position. So I'm just going to copy it in here. And then a little bit of copy pasting. Copy again here. Copy again here. One more and then we're going to need it to control these option button, the option button positioning as well. And there we go. So it didn't take too long in the end, but hopefully you can see why it's convenient to assign this value to a variable. It means that the code is much more compact, easier to work with. So for me, that little extra step um, is, worth doing, is worth doing. It should also result in slightly more efficient, faster processing of the code as well. So I'm pretty happy with this. Let's give it a test then. Back to the spreadsheet, click the add button, put some details in here. And what, are, what are, are we expecting to happen? Well, we're expecting the details to be added to the end of the database. So let's see uh, what happens there. In fact, before I do this, I'm just gonna check who is at the bottom of the database. So we're expecting it to be added in, um, this row underneath the database, although I've got a suspicion that it might overwrite the bottom row, but that's okay. We can just go back and tweak the code. So let's go to the add button, test, test, so just making up some information, then continue. Okay, we could see then that the information has overwritten the bottom line of the database. That means we're close but we're not quite yet there yet. We just need to make a small tweak to make it perfect. Now that's a good example of how I usually work with code. I don't sweat too much about the details of the codes. 
uh, it's much quicker, I think, to be able to to try it out and understand what's going on. Now, clearly, you need to save the file before you do this, but as long as you're backing up the file as you go along, the best way to work with code, in my view, is to write some code, test it out, understand what it's doing, and then to go back to the code and to tweak it. Don't try to make the code perfect first time, necessarily, because that's going to take a lot of time. It's more efficient just to test it out. Now I know if I just put a plus one here, it's going to make this variable one higher. And that means that in turn, the data is going to go one row further down in the database. So let's give this a test. One more, put my details in again. There we go, we'd expect my name to appear on row 258 at the bottom of the database. Just hit continue, and there we can see my details have appeared there. So the position control mechanism, count a formula, the variable in the Visual Basic Editor, the offset command, all these elements working together to create this cool dynamic mechanism to control position. Now, why do we only have a few details here? Well, clearly we need to build up the code uh, I've only got, I'm only putting in the first name, the surname, the full name, the age, and the yes, no option about child there. So between the videos, I'm gonna build up this code to put all of the details in. It would be a good idea, a good idea for you to try that uh, as well. And then we're gonna to get to a situation, and I'll demo this at the, the beginning of the next video, where we can fill out the form and all of the details will be added at the bottom of the form. So clearly we're making good progress uh, with this user form task, but we're gonna do more in this series. We've got to a point where we can add somebody to a database, but in real life, realistically, there's, if, there's other things you're going to want to do. You, for example, it will be useful to be able to edit an entry in the database. That's what we're going to look at in subsequent videos. And just to demo that, let's go to the completed file. If I click edit here, I'm able to choose a name, hit continue. You can see it retrieves, retrieves the details for the record from the database. I can then do an edit here. So we're not just talking about adding entries to the database. We're also talking about being able to retrieve an entry and then do an edit. That's what we're going to look at uh, in subsequent videos. Before that, we're gonna have a look at some validation issues. Bit of a dry topic, but super important for a programmer because prevention is much better than cure in computer programming. So what possibly might go wrong with this user form and how can we you know, think ahead of ourselves, plan to make sure everything goes smoothly and the user has a good experience with this user form. Hope you'll join me in the next video.